Welcome back to the Hybrid Chase YouTube channel. Today's class will learn how to make this beautiful two blouse with elegant sleeve details. So this sleeve is really beautiful as you can see and it comes from the neckline area all the way to the arm and it has multiple holes. This is something you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, for this you need your basic bodies, but we've been doing basic bodies on the channel already, so I'm just going to rush through it. My shoulder measurement is 14 inches, the by 2 is going to give me 7 inches, so I marked that and then I did my shoulder through. So I'm working with a neckline of 3 inches by 3 inches for the front bodies. I'm going to connect that. So I've done my neckline cover and my shoulder slope. I'm working with an armhole measurement of 9 inches. So from the upper part I'll measure that and then also my waist measurement that the half length is 18 inches. And I'm also measuring that. So I'll take as many points as possible and then I'll make that into a straight line. So for my armhole I'll take my shoulder measurements downwards like this also and then I'll connect that like this. I'll look for the midpoint of this, that's 4 inches and then I'm going to go inwards by five by half an inch then on my hammer measurement i'll take my bust measurement 36 inches by by four and that's going to give me nine inches and i'll connect these three points together from here here and here to form my arm hole curve okay so you just look for where you have the three points together and then you draw your curve just like this so now on my waist, on my half length measurement, I'll take my waist measurement. So the waist I'm working with is 30 inches. Very well, it's going to give me seven and a half. So I'm going to have seven and a half inches here. I'm going to be adding a dart of quarter of an inch on both sides. That's going to be one and a half inches for my dart. So I'll add that also. And then I'm going to connect this to my bust. So here from my... For my bust pan, I'm working with 8 inches. 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 4 inches. So, to, to form my dart, I need that measurement. So, from this arm hole also, I'm going to go downwards by 1.5 inches from my true bust line. And that's where my, my dart is going to stop. So, I'm just making sure that this is on the 4 inches mark. And then I'll connect this. So, after connecting this, I'll take the quarter, three quarter of an inch dart that I'm using on both sides okay and then i'll connect this where my dart stops so here is my waist dart so for this pattern you can actually use a poster dart for this i'm just going to be using a regular waist dart and a shoulder dart so for my shoulder dart i measure what i have left on my shoulder that's four inches divided by two is going to give me two inches i'll mark that and then i'm going to connect that to my bust point here so for the shoulder that i'm taking it out of through quarter of an inch on both sides also so i'm taking that on this side and then also on this side and then i'm going to connect it to this point okay so after connecting it to this point, you'll notice that now my dart is my shoulder is short. So it will be short by one and a half inches that, that I took here. So I'm just going to extend this shoulder measurement. So now I'm going to extend this by the one and a half inches. If you check here now, you see that I have a shortage of exactly one and a half inches. So here I'm going to extend my shoulder line by one and a half inches to avoid that shortage that i may have okay so here now you're just going to check what you have at intervals okay you can just divide this by maybe by six five points okay or you can just eyeball it and then start replacing them so here now i have a shortage of around one and quarter so the one and quarter i'm going to move it here remember this is my actual arm line okay this is the actual arm line this is just a guide so here now 
have a shortage of around one and a half inches. So I'm just going to move to one and a half inches, to one and a quarter. Sorry, and then I'm going to notice. So here again, I'll check what I have here. Here I have around quarter, three quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to move this now and mark the three quarter of an inch. So all this is just so that I don't have any shortage. So I have half an inch shortage here. And here I'm going to move this. Just do that at intervals and then note your point. So this new point now is what you're going to use to redraw your handful. Okay. So now you place your ruler on it and try to match up as much points as possible. You can take all of them together, it's fine. But if you cannot take all of them together, you can get like maybe three to match each other. Okay, like I have here, you just draw your new ample line. So with this now, you are not going to be having your any shortage, and this is your ample line. So here, I'm going to add my allowance to my pattern. So I'm adding more than half inches allowance to both the first line and the waistline, and then I have it like this. So you go over now and draft the back bodies. So for the back, I just extended my waist measurement and my ample measurement here, and then I'm going to. This is my zipper allowance. There's going to be a zipper here. So from there, I'll take my shoulder measurement of 7 inches. So I just wanted to show the front because I've been getting a lot of questions about shoulder that and how you can add back your shortage. So that was why I just took that opportunity to do that. So the ample, the neckline measurement I'm working with for the back is 3 inches by 1 inch. This is just a tentative regular neckline. I'm still going to modify this by the time we start drafting this proper. So this is my shoulder slope. And here I'm going to take my measurement for my bust. And then here I'm going to take my waist measurement, which is seven and a half inches. And then I'm adding half an inch that. That's one inch. So I'll connect all this together. Then I'll take my side allowance of one and a half inches and then I'll connect it. So here now I'm going to draft my half O measurements and we can just do this. So I don't want this to be too long, so I'm just rushing through this so that we can start drafting this properly. Okay, so I have my front now. And my back pattern. So my patterns are cut out now. I'm going to set the back aside and work on the front. So the first thing I'm going to do on the front is to transfer my shoulder dart to my bust. Okay, and to do this, I'll just open one side of the shoulder dart and the one side of the waist dart. So I'm transferring the shoulder dart to the waist. There's no bust out on this pattern. So once I open this up now, I'm going to close it on the shoulder and then my dart would have been transferred automatically to my waistline. Okay, so I'm closing this now and then I'm holding it with a masking tape. So after closing your dart, you want to have a shift around the shoulder area here. So you take your ruler and then you redraw your shoulder measurement. Okay. So from your neck point, you trace it out. If you don't have enough paper, you can just place a fresh paper underneath it. And then you do this, okay? But I can still make do with what I have here. I'm just going to smoothen it up. But ideally, you should have a fresh paper underneath it so that you can have something straight. So the next thing is to determine the depth you want for your neckline. So now that is how deep you want your neckline to be. So for me, from the upper part here, I want the neck depth to stop around. 8 inches, 7 to 8 inches, so I can do 7 and a half, depending on how low you want this to be, so if I'm doing 8 inches here, I'm just going to take my curve ruler 
from that point now i'll connect it to my hand hole okay with my cord driller so i'm going to connect it with my hand hole i don't want it too high so if what the curve you have cannot do this for you can get a better curve but this is fine for me so i'm just connecting it like this so you can see what i have sorry my marker is dry i don't know let me try this okay so the next thing now is to work on your neckline so if you're okay with this neck width you can maintain it if not you can extend it so i'll be extending this neck width by one inch like this or half an inch and then from there now i'm going to connect it to my to this neck depth in form of a v neckline okay so i don't want it to be at the center front exactly so here i'll also be going outwards by maybe one inch or you can even connect it like that and you modify it when you're drafting it so i have like a v neckline here and then i can cut this out so let me cut this v neck so that we can see so this is our v neckline and this part now becomes my yoke so now this is the shape that i have for the front So now you can cut out your dart completely and then you detach it. So this is my center front, this is my front front, and this is my yoke for the front. So I'm going to keep this now. And then work also on the back. So also on the back, the modifications you need to do on our neckline, we increase it by the same half inch that we used for the front. And then the depth, I'm going to maintain what I have for my for my armhole line. So this is my neck depth for the back, and then here for the back, I'm going to. You can just maintain this straight line that you have. Or you want it deeper, you can just go downwards by one inch, or one and a half inches, and then from your ham hole area, you connect it mm, like a U form to this point, like this. So it's totally up to you. So if you connect it like that, I'm going to cut this out also, and this upper part now becomes my U. So if I do it like this, then it means I can just extend my neckline up to this point where I increase this. Remember, I wanted to use this before, but I've increased this by one and a half inches. So I'm just extending this for my neckline, and then I can cut out this neckline. So if you notice this, you notice that my neckline, my V neckline does not enter into my zipper allowance because I don't need zipper allowance for this. So I have this now as my back. Okay. So this is what the back is looking like. So now this yoke, what you need it for is to draft the yoke that you're going to be placing on this. And what you do is to measure this V that you have for the front and back. And then you have this together so for the front here i have eight and a half inches and then for the back i have ten and quarter okay so you had it and half to ten and quarter and you note that somewhere and ten and quarter is going to give me around 18 and three quarter 18.75 so you note that and you keep it it's very important so here now i'm going to cut out these that for my back and then you can just label it cb this is the center back and this is the side back and then you note that this is the upper part for them you can do this for your front also but the front is quite obvious i don't think you can miss that so this is the center front this is the side front i can note this as the upper part as well so now i'll go and cut all this on my fabric now and bring it back to show us what we have so i've gone ahead to cut this on my fabric i'm using this entire fabric for this 
and then I've cut out for both the front and the back okay so now I'll set this aside so for my yoke now you need your measurement this 18 and cut set to quarter measurement you need it and then I'm using this dull face fabric for it so you should use fabric that I big strong like damask okay so that I can give you that structure that you're looking for but for this tutorial this is what I'm using and for your patterns Anywhere you are going to be joining, you should add allowance to it because I just have this little fabric, so I just cut it exactly the same way. But on the upper part here, you should have your same allowance. On your dart lines, you should have your same allowance. So you not have any shortage at the end of your drafting. So I have this now, and then remember my neckline but for both the front and the back is 18 and quarter okay so now for this neckline area now we're going to be placing it so it depends on how big you want it to be you can just multiply this by one and a half or you double it by multiplying it by two but it shouldn't be too much also so i think i'll just be using one and a half inches so if i multiply 18 inches by 18.75 by one and a half i'm going to have around so that's going to give me around 28.25 there about. so i'll just approximate that to 29 or 30 inches okay so this 30 inches now is going to be the length of my fabric 30 inches for both the front and back 30 inches and i'm going to place that so now to know the width of the fabric you need to take your measurement from your center back okay so if you have this tentative woman figure here so you take the measurement from your center back all the way to your wrist where you want these sleeves to stop so for me from the center back to the wrist is around 29 inches so this means i have 30 inches for my length and 29 inches for the width again for the width i'm still going to place it on the underarm area okay so for that placing i'm going to be adding few inches for to that also so i can just add five inches to this so i hope you understand what i'm doing the 30 inches we got it by multiplying the 18 18.75 this 18.75 we got it by measuring this v that we have in front and v at the back we got it uh, we got eight and a half for the front and ten and a quarter for the back so adding these two gave me 18.75 then i multiplied this by one and a half and i said you can multiply it by two if you want but because i don't want this too big I'm and because this fabric i'm using is soft so i don't want it coming down so i don't want it too big but if you're working with a fabric like that like that is a bit structured you can use two inches so i'm using one and a half and then this gave me approximately 30 inches so that's going to be the length of my yoke now to know the width of my yoke you're going to measure from your center back to your wrist that's where this sleeve is stopping and that measurement gave me 29 inches and i said i want to pleat it a bit on the underarm area also so for that pleating i'm just adding five inches to this so if i had 29 plus 5 it's going to give me 34 inches which means i'm going to cut a fabric of 30 inches long and 34 inches wide two of that for both sides okay and we're cutting the front and back together so you should not be worried about the front or the back so i've gone ahead to cut my fabric now and i cut it 30 inches by 34 inches so i'm putting it on fold by the 30 inches remember that's for the front and back okay so now on fold now i'm going to have 15 inches so as you can see i have 15 inches here i hope you can see this okay so now the next thing now is to shape this sleeve so if you look at the thumbnail you will see that it has like a fitted effect on the wrist area so what you do is take your wrist measurement your round wrist measurement loosely because there's not going to be elastic and you want your hand to still pass through it so for me i have nine inches here so nine inches divided by two is going to give me four and a half inches so unfold okay remember it's unfold by 30 inches and the length is 34 and the 34 you remember i added five inches to my 29 inches you don't have to add it but i just want it to be really full that's why i added the five inches to it so i have 34 by 30 inches so here now on the folded part here at the so the m line area that's where the wrist is going to be i measure my four and a half inches and then i'll add half an inch or one inch seam allowance to it okay 
so i have it like this so the next thing now is to connect it to this hopper part i hope you can see it well just pay attention to this closely i hope you can see it better now so now i've marked my five and a half inches with allowance here so on this hopper part now i'm going to bring in my part my bodies i've gone ahead to join my that and then I sew the front and back together here, as you can see. So what I'm going to do now is to put it on fold by the center front alone. Okay, so I'll put it on fold by the center front and then I'm going to place it here. So I'm not, remember I said I'm not going to be starting this directly on my center front. So I'm just going to measure half an inch away from my center front, which is here. Okay, so I'm going to place this. On this half an inch part this is the part that i'm sewing to my bodies so from that half an inch part now i'm going to stop it where i have my side seam that's where the front stops so i'm going to note that point i hope we get that i folded my fabric into two equal parts this is my center front this is my center back so on the center front area i went inwards by half an inch and then i just noted so you can just use your tape to check what you have there from that point all the way to your side seam i have around seven and five inches there so if you want it pleated you can add extra to it so instead of just having your seven and half like this you can just take it up to nine inches and then you just gather a little around that area but if you don't want it you just take your exact measurement so the main thing is i want to connect from this point where my side seam stops to my my wrist area okay so that tiny place so because marilla cannot take it at once i'm just going to break it like this and then i'll take my ruler and i'll connect it in a diagonal line like this so i'm connecting this like this and up to this point so here i'm not going to i'm just going to go upwards by half an inch and connect it so that it will be easy for me to sew so i'm going to cut this out so here i'll just go by half an inch like this so now after having this the next thing now is to pleat i mean it now i'm going to pleat this back to my actual measurement of 18 and the quarter but because i want it firm i'm not going to be putting it to exact that exact measurement i can deduct one or two inches from that because i want it really to stay on the shoulder area so i'm going to go and pleat all of this now i'll hem it and then pleat it to around maybe 17 inches or 16 and a half inches so i'll do that and bring it back to shoulders. i want to take it step by step so i'm placing this part that's going to be on my shoulder area first okay so i've gone ahead to hem it neatly as you can see then i pleated it to 16 inches okay because i want it really firm so you should just confirm this with your client to be sure so this is pleated to 16 inches as we can see i have 16 inches here so you can see what i have here so now i still have this long part okay so now the next thing i'm going to do now is to put it on this side so so that i can have something equal on both sides i'm just going to fold it into two now and then put it by around two and a half inches okay so what i mean by that is i can start my pleating from here so i'm going to notch it together and then on that point i'm going to measure five inches because i don't want this this uh, on the ham area to be too long okay by the time i'm done so i'll measure five inches you know five inches by the time i pleat it like this it's going to fall to two and a half inches so i'm going to notch that part also okay so i can measure another two and a half inches like this for another pleat so i'll have like three pleats here that's what i want and then from that next one i'll measure another five inches i hope you, it's simple it's not difficult by the time we finish this you understand what i'm talking about so now i have the first piece five inches gap interval so this is the next piece so for the last one i'm going to measure around two and a half inches again okay you can measure three inches if that is what you want i'll notch it and then from there 
I'll measure the last piece, five inches. Okay, and then I'm going to notch that too. Okay, so now I'll go over to my machine and place it. So I'll place it like this, like this on this side, and then the same thing I did on this side. I'll do on this side also, same direction. So I'm pleating like this on the first one, I'll pleat it, then I'll go back to the next one, I'll pleat like this again, then go to the last one, and then also pleat, then I'll hem it on this side. So I'll go and do that now and bring it to show us. I've gone ahead to pleat this side also. Okay, so you can see the pleatings that I did. I have three pleatings there, and then I'll reduce the underarm to around 13 or 12 inches. You don't want your underarm to be too long because this is a big sleeve. And it doesn't have elastic so if it's too long on the underarm here you don't want it spilling over your hand okay so now i'll so close this underarm area i'm going to sew it close i have around 13 inches 12 inches like i said this is around 13 inches okay there about because i don't if it's too big it may spill over your hand so you want to keep this as short as possible so i have this 13 inches now i'm going to sew it close and then this open part that we have remember we use our bodies to get that measurement of where we're going to be sewing it to so this is going to be opened when i sew this close i'll bring it back to show us how we're going to sew it to our bodies so now the underarm is sewn you can see what we have now so i'm going to turn it to the right side so when you turn it to the right side you have this okay so now i'm going to sew this to my bodies so now i have my bodies this is my side seam so this side seam should guide you this is towards the center front and this is towards the center back so what you do now is to place it the side seam, this side seam should guide you, you should place it like this and then so I'm going to match it, you can see this underarm, I'm going to match it to this side now so you close it up completely and then you sew towards the center front and the center back like that so you take it to the machine now and run a stitch so this that you have done now, you do it to the other sleeve and do the same thing so I'll do this now and bring it back to show us okay so now i've done this to the other side also and like i said you can see i just sew it straight okay all the way from my center front to my center back you can see how i just sew it and this is what i have so this is what the sleeve is looking like this is the first one you can see how voluminous it is and this is the second one and these are the pleats on our underarm area so you can see that the underarm arm is short compared to what we have this and this piece that you have here is going to help to control this so that it's not going to be spilling over our hand okay so now i'll take this to the mannequin so that we'll see what this is looking like and then you can see that on my center front i went by half an inch so if you're going to be adding lining to this you just cut your lining the same way you cut your main bodies you sew it and then you sew, you you just place them against each other now and then you sew it and flip it over so that it can conceal these rough edges for you so that's how you're going to be flip, fixing your lining to this so i'll take it to the mannequin so that we'll see what it looks like so this is what our blouse looks like you can see the pleats along the neckline area on both sides and this is the half, half inch space that i left before placing my bodies on it so this is the full view of the blouse and this is the sleeve so you see this place that we have here on the underarm area is going to control the length of the sleeve you can see that it's not going beyond the arm area okay so this is the other side also and this is the pleats these are the pleats on the other side also it's a very simple blouse to make and it's really beautiful i hope you enjoyed making this with me if you enjoyed it let us in the comment section like, comment and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.